precious name. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 All right, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Amen. And welcome to our Friday night's edition. Uh, here at the Countdown to the End campaign, we hope and trust that you had a good week this week. You had a good day today. Amen. Amen. By the way, anybody got pay? Yes. <laughs> you, all, no, you all didn't get paid today? All I hear is a grumbling. I don't know. <laughs> yeah? No work, no pay. <laughs> We really hope and trust you get. We really hope and trust you got some pay today. Whatever you do, um, if not this week, then at least next week. Amen. But let me add uh, my coat of welcome to all of those of you who, if you are worshiping with us for the very first time, we are delighted to have you. Any first timer here? Just raise your hand. Let's see. Okay, we see some first timers. Come on, give them a round of applause. There, yeah, good, good, great. Some some first timers. Quite a few first timers. We're happy to have you. We don't know where you have been all this time, but we are grateful. Very, very grateful to have you, I including some. Um, we have some first timers. Yes, um, um, somebody have been. I'm looking for the where where are the where are the folks. Okay, so um, if you see somebody looking around, looking like me, um, um, so among the first timers uh, this evening, somebody say. Um, Pastor, when your wife's going to be here? So I'm happy to say that she's here tonight. And I'm looking for her somewhere around. <laughs> wife, where are you? <laughs> yeah, she's over here uh, th this evening. And then, of course, um, if you see Elder Joshua looking very happy also, his wife has landed. landed. Yeah, come on, give him a run. Yeah, both of them there. Um, coming in. Okay, welcome ladies. Come on in, come on in. Um, the folks have been asking for you, so we want to make sure that they are there. Um, give them a round of applause as they come. Yep. Came in to join us for this part of the campaign. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Uh, by the way, it's family night, am I right? Yes, yes it's family night. So we, we did tell you to bring your somebody out. Amen. Yeah, I'm serious. Anybody? We did say we did say this one's family night. Family night. We discuss family business. And by the way, I think I have some in-laws here as well. Heather and Tommy uh, should be here. Um, I hope and trust I can see. I'm not able to spot you guys, but if you're out there, I want to welcome you and uh, welcome all family members. For the last three weeks, we have been one big happy family here under the tent. And the church say. And we have some family online also, wherever you are online. We don't know what happened to the internet tonight, but we pray that God's uh, power will overrule. All right, good. So a couple of things we wanted to do quickly. Number one, so because this is for family night, I did say to you that if you, I want to, I want to, is there anybody, I want to recognize the newest married couple in the island of Jamaica. Is, there, and is anybody under the tent you were married? You think you are the newest married couple? Anybody? You think you are the newest married couple? All of you don't marry, they married a long time ago. Anybody newest? Then if you think you are the newest, if, if you are here with your spouse, yes, okay, I see one hand. Yeah, yeah, good. Stand, 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 stand. Mm hmm. Good, 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 good. Great. When were you guys married? Last year, May. <laughs> Why are you laughing at her? <laughs> I, I agree with your sister. A anybody can beat last year, May. Anybody can beat last year, May? No? Going once? Going twice? Anybody can beat last year? Newer than last year, May. Uh, where? where? Where are the couple? We're the couple. We're the couple. It has to be a couple, you know. We're the couple. It has to be a couple. It has to be husband and wife. Yeah, come, come. When? Huh? Last year, July. <laughs> this is serious competition. Yes, 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 yes. Where the husband? 
husband, where, husband, where are you? Husband, where are you? Keep standing, keep standing. I've lost your May, I've lost your July. Uh, when, when, when were you? December, last year, December. All right, last year, December, last year, December. All right, um, co come husband, last year, December. Husband? Yeah, husband, last year, December. I have May, I have July, I have December. Anybody, anybody closer? Today, where's the person? I don't believe you. Yeah, but today? You have somebody married today? So they didn't hear me talk about it. Come on, are you married today? Yeah, man, you're married today. Yay! Come on up, come on up, come on up. Man, yeah, this is what. So you are the newest married couple in the entire island of Jamaica. Amen? Anybody can beat today? <laughs> Nobody beat today. All right, I have a, come on guys, bring me, bring me a special gift. Bring, bring us, yeah, I have a special gift. I have a special gift. Yeah, man, you, you got married today. Presented Pastor. A special gift courtesy of the countdown to the end. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Good, 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 good. Give them a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Somebody beat me. <laughs> All right, good, good stuff. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, um, so here's the next thing. It's family night here under the tent here. Is anybody, next, the next couple, the next couple who is closest to your wedding date. You're the next, you're the closest person to you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, you are soon to be married. And so the person who is closest to their wedding date, the couple has to be your husband and wife. You're the closest to you. We have one? Yeah, bring them come. Let me hear how close they are. Oh, close you are. Oh, close you are. Oh, close you are, oh, close, oh, close you are, oh, close you are, oh, close you are, oh, close, oh, close you are, oh, close. Come on, right? Oh, yep, yep, yep. I see wedding on your face right there looking at. There you go, there you go, there you go. Okay, so tell me, when is the wedding day? Saturday morning. Next week, Saturday morning? You mean next week? Tomorrow? Next week. Okay. Is there anybody closer? I'm getting married in the morning. Any, any, anybody closer? Anybody cl going once? You have a one? You have a wedding coming up? Yeah, tell you, come on. Where, where, you, where is somebody? Oh, she, she's unable to walk. Oh, where the per person? Where are you? That's another one? W when are you planning to? Next week, Wednesday. Next week, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, that beat next week, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Here's another one, here's another one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you're going to be getting married? I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> are you married to this, lady, this gentleman here? So when do you guys plan to get married? Next week, Wednesday. Next week, Wednesday. So the question now is, anybody closer than next week, Wednesday? Going once? Going twice? Yeah, well, I'm gonna come out of my business, man. <laughs> anybody, anybody closer than Wednesday? All right, since both of you are at when, next week, Wednesday, what time will you be married? Huh? 10 o'clock. And you? Uh, uh, anytime. Anytime. <laughs> I love, I love this, I love this, I love this. So, 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 so I need, I need to, I need to find the lady. Oh, she's unable to walk. Okay. Uh, uh, lady, could you raise your hand? What's her name? Huh? Randine, raise your hand. Where she is? Over there. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. I see you all the way down there. Okay, good, good, good. So here's the thing. So you're going to marry her anytime Wednesday. I agree. Stay put. Guys, come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come on up, come on up. So, so this couple is 
10 o'clock. Yep. Congratulations. This, another one, a couple. This couple is Wednesday, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Come on, come on up. And, yep. Yeah, 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 Saturday, Saturday. And we have one more. And we have one more for the anytime. Yeah, yeah anytime Wednesday. Anytime Wednesday. Congratulations. Come on, give me a round of applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Wish you guys all the best. That you'll live happily ever. Absolutely. It, it, only, it only happens here in the countdown to the end campaign. Then we really want to say thanks to um, somebody, somebody thought of the idea of putting together a wonderful package for the couples tonight. Isn't that wonderful? We have some beautiful people here in in um, in in um, in Portmore, Portmore, and somebody got married today. Exciting stuff! Exciting stuff! Good, 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 good. By the way, I was telling you, um, you can find your person here under the tent. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking, anybody? If you're single, any, all the single people, hold your hand. single people, single people, single people. Yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Hold your hand, high man, high, high, and lift it up. Good, 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 good. There you go. All at the single people. <laughs> May, the, oh man. May the Lord bless you real good. For the rest of the gift, we will, we will, um, I, I really want to just squeeze out. Um, anybody who brought the most guests tonight, I have a copy of my book still available. Anybody brought 10? Nine, quickly, seven, eight, six, five, five. Five, five, I'll keep my book at five. All right, I'll bring it. We'll, we'll, we, five, birthday. birthday. Yeah. Whose birthday today? Okay, come on, birthday girl, come on, girl. come on, word of applause. Quickly, 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 quickly. Birthday, birthday. You have birthday in March, you deserve it. You deserve it. Congratulations, congratulations. Happy birthday. God bless you real good, real good. Yes, from me to you. We were on the same month. Amen, amen, amen. Your birthday today too? No, you so keep quiet with it. I don't understand. Uh, that, is, that is serious, uh, okay? That is serious, that is serious. All right, thank you so much. God bless you. We see you on... So congratulations. Yes, good people born in March, you know? I'm just saying, you know, they born other months too, but I have to big up March. <laughs> All right, let, <laughs> let me tell you what's going to happen for the rest of this week. Um, this weekend, if we can get my slide on the screen, guys, let's roll on the screen if I can, can get my slide. Here we go, good. So tonight we're discussing this subject, is it okay to be gay? That's tonight. And then tomorrow, big presentation. Anybody know tomorrow? better than yard amen no way no better than yeah that's gonna be on tomorrow tomorrow and then on Sunday and Sunday when you come huh with not with putting it one notch higher each week we go one notch. is it higher or deeper I don't know but we're going somewhere Sunday night's presentation Sunday night's presentation big presentation it's just a verse away. If you, I, I'll prove, I will prove to you that the coming of God is just one single dege dege verse away. It's in your Bible on Sunday night. Sunday night. Monday night, the last sign. Don't miss this one. God gave us a list of signs. And then he says, when you see this one, it's the curtain draw. That's it. The show is over. The very last sign. Has that happened as yet? We're going to see that on Monday night. Tuesday night when you're here. When heaven gets silent, that's going to be on Tuesday night. Big stuff. Until half an hour heaven was silent. What on earth is happening up in Heaven, Tuesday night, when heaven gets silent, we crack that one. And then on Wednesday night, Wednesday night, spot check at the pearly gates, y'all. Mm -hmm. 
Wednesday night, don't miss it. Big power presentation. Spot check at the pearly gates. Thursday night, there'll be no meeting. But when you come on Friday, here's a big presentation on Friday. Sex, Savior, and Salvation. Every Friday night, we're going for my life. Sex, Savior, and Salvation. Those mix up all together on Friday night. And then next week, Saturday morning, draw the curtains down with this big presentation. When the King comes in. All right, when the king comes in, comes in. I'm going to ask my wife to come on up. Yep, yep, yep. I know Portmore people know Z, you know, they want to see you. There you go. You want to see her? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. There you go. There, there you go. There, there you go. There you go. Uh, thank you so much. There you go, there you go, there you go. Amen. Um, came in this afternoon, but very quiet and shy. Thank you so much. And um, of course, Sister Lawrence, come on up, come on up, Sister Lawrence, come on up, come on up, come on up, yep, yep. If you, everybody knows Josh, he's all over the place. So this is, this, this is the source of inspiration behind Brother Lawrence. Where's Josh? Disappear, disappear. Can we get a round of applause for her? Congratulations for your support, ma'am. Really, really, really. Thank you so much. Okay, shall we stand on our feet? That's where we normally stand and we sing. Ancient words long preserved for walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Let the ancient, by now you should know my song. Here we go. Holy words long preserved for walk.
that tonight we should be here because you have a word for us. Remove this piece of clay because I am not necessary and speak to your people all by yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so, the question we have to settle tonight is whether it's okay to be gay. I would like to begin, you know, I, I decide I will not preach tonight. I'm just going to, again, Friday night, we just do some family talk. Is that all right? Yes. yes, just a family talk. So let's talk as a family. Let me begin with some definitions. Right? If, you Google, if you Google this thing gay and get the definition of it, it Google will tell you, uh, gay is used to describe men and women attracted to the same sex Though lesbian is more commonly common term for women. But for our discussion this evening, or presentation, I'd like to propose um, this definition. Gay person, a person who has a sexual or romantic relationship with, should be a person of the same sex. So we get the idea, right? Good, get the idea, good the idea. Now, I don't know who is behind the movement, but they did, the gay rights champions, they did an awesome job in putting a protective framework around the subject. They did a tremendous job in putting a, a framework around the subject so that folks will have to think twice before they comment negatively on this subject. So as a result of that, they have come up with hate speech legislation. Is the church with me? And so one now has to be careful what one says, lest one be deemed to be guilty of hate speech. And by the way, I could understand why a hate speech legislation is necessary because in some quarters, people have been violent to people who are of that orientation. And that is not appropriate and that is not right. So I could understand why it is necessary. However, but things have gone so far that where it reaches now is if you say, I don't agree with that behavior, that statement alone can put you in trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you say, that is not godly behavior, then people begin to think, oh, you're a hater. If you, if you object, then you can find yourself in trouble. And so, people who object and people who share different opinion and people who say that is not right, that is not godly, very light, automatically you begin to be perceived as intolerant or, or homophobic yeah, or, or unloving or uncaring. And then, and, then, and then you will be criticized that as a Christian you ought to love everybody. And so that, that's the... That's the, that's the framework that is set up so people don't say anything anymore. And preachers don't preach on it anymore. So this, the pulpit is silent on the subject. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So the question we want to ask tonight, is it okay? And the answer to that is, um, hey, hey, it dep hey, hey, it depends who you ask. Because if you ask the Supreme Court in the United States, they will say yes, because they legalize it. Uh -huh. If you ask the European Union, they will say 
Yes, it's okay. Don't discriminate. Uh, if you ask the United Nations, they will say, yes, in fact, in 2011, they were considering, there was a subcommittee considering to make gay rights one of the human rights. If you ask the government of 30 nations on the planet, they will say, yes, it's okay. The question is, if you ask God, what does he say? Because you see, governments of the land don't set moral standard. You cannot legislate morality. Right? The moral standard is set by God himself. So if you ask God, what will God say? Well, 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 I can tell you, I, I've done a little research. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, God instructed Moses to tell the children of Israel the following. Leviticus 20, 13. I'm talk Leviticus what? 20, 20. I'm talking Bible. Here's what God says. Let me read it. If a man lies with a man as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed what? Abomination. Now, this is not the Adventist church. This is Bible. Are we together? Yes, 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 yes. The Bible says, if a man lies with another man as he does it, all, both of them have committed abomination. And notice it didn't say both of them have committed sin. Ah, abomination is the strongest word. So I, I, I decided to look up what abomination, because I, poor, more people don't use the word abomination. When was the last year? Somebody, come out of my face, you're an abomination. <laughs> so, so I had to look up abomination. Yeah, I, do you, by the way, you have Google on your phone, you can look it up. You have, you have G, chat, GPC, GPT, you can look it up. If you look up abomination, these are some of the words, right? The synonyms of abomination. This is what abomination means. Here's it. Here, here's it. It means what? Disgust. What else? Repugnant. What else? Loathsome, what else? Detestable. These are the meaning. So, so what, what Leviticus 20 verse 3 says, a man who does that, the Bible says both of them have committed something that is disgusting, something that is repugnant, something that is loathsome, something that God detests. Are we together? Yes, 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 yes. yes. That's what God says. So as far as God is concerned, it is what we call Forbidden sex. In fact, if you miss it, if you miss it, here's another one. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Here's what the Bible says. Let's read again. God speaking. Let me read. One, two, three. Do not have sexual relationships with a man as one does with a woman. That is what? Detestable. That's a second um, um, chapter um, quote from the Bible, right? So the Bible is so the Bible is explicitly clear that it is not only wrong but it is the worst kind of wrong, abomination. Is the church with me? You, you know, you know, which is interesting. Come on, you have to use your brain. God says when a man has sex with another man's wife, we call that adultery. Right? And that is wrong. But strangely enough, I don't see abomination beside that one. Isn't it, isn't it interesting? This is, this, is, this, is the, this is the act that the word abomination is attached to. Hang on, hang on, hang on. And by the way, that's not the only, that's not the only forbidden sex. Here is Leviticus, Leviticus 18 verse 6. What does it say? No, help me read everybody. No one is to approach any close relative to have sexual relationships because I am the Lord precisely. So that is also forbidden. Am I right? Yes. So it is not just homosexuality that is forbidden. In fact, here's another, here's another sexual relationship that God has forbidden. Here's it, here's it, here's it. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18. Help me read everybody. One, two, three. Flee what? 
Fornication. Stop. What is fornication? Yes, when two non-married people, two people who are not married, having sex, the Bible says, you must do what? Flee that. So if you're, if you're dating and you're having sex, forbidden sex, that's wrong. Am I right? Oh, you get quiet, so I don't understand you. What's going on under the tent? You all get mighty quiet. Like, hey, what the word flee means? Run. You know, it's amazing what the Bible says. If you <laughs> hey, run from that kind of sexual activity and put more people running to that sexual activity. When God says run from it. Why? 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 Because, help me read, every sin that a man doeth is outside of his body. Is the church with me? But he that cometh fornication uses body to sin. So what's the problem if you use your body to sin? Well, the answer is, the answer is, Paul says, what? No, you don't you know that your body is the... So you're using God's temple to commit sin. See the problem? Now, will that not offend God? Yes, Paul says, uh, is your, the, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Whether you're big or small, thin or full, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own. Paul says, for you are, help me read, for you are what? Bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are? So God becomes very offended when we use our temple, when we desecrate our temple and use it involved in sexual immorality. Is the church with me? Yes. No, the world may accept it, but God hasn't. You know, one time, one time, a couple of weeks ago, I told you, I told you, sex is one of the biggest sins on this planet. And this is the sin that will draw down the destruction on planet Earth. Hang on, hang on. I mean it. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Having said that then, having said that then, according to that text, common law relationship is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not just homosexuality wrong. If you're living as a man and woman together, having sex together, and you're not married, the law of, of the Jamaica government may allow common law relationship. In God's book, there's no common law. Are we together? Here's why, here's why I'm saying, but I'm talking to as a family. Here's what I'm saying. Because there are folks, maybe some of you under this tent, maybe you, some of you listen online, who have lived for years and years and years in a sinful relationship. Some of you, some people even die in it, buried in it, gone to hell in it. When it didn't have to be so. If you love somebody, find a marriage officer, amen. Make a commitment to God so that your life is no longer a risk to your soul's salvation. Amen. Why would you go to hell when you don't have to? There are people who 30 years, 35 years, till it become normal. It is so, no in fact, more people now are doing it rather than marriage. Hell, hey, Bertrand, listen, no matter how normal it becomes, no matter how acceptably become, in God's eyes, it is still a sin. It will send your soul to hell. So if you are in that situation, fix it up. Amen. Amen. Fix it up. And, and by the way, you don't need no money to get married. Think about it. If, if money was needed for married, then the poor people would die in their sin. God doesn't require none. Neither does the church require none. All you need right now is one witness, one male, one female, and a pastor, and you're good. You don't need no ring. 
I, I checked the Bible, I can't find a text that says you need a ring to be married. Adam and Eve never married it any ring. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need to dress up in a jacket and tie and go, no, 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 no. Just come as you are. Because you're already living married life, so might as well you just formalize it. Are we together, brethren? And, and, and if you, if you, hey, because if you, <laughs> if you're living with somebody at home, you know, watch me. If you're living with somebody at home and you're not married, you are putting not just your life, but your soul salvation at risk. You're putting your soul salvation at risk. Why would you do that when you don't have to? So, 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 if you live with a person, and a person don't want to get married. You, hey, 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 let, let me put it. You have to put God first. God must come before your wife. God must come before your husband. Hey, because when wife gone leave you, God is still there. When husband God leave you, God is still there. God was there before him and God will be there long after him. Put God first. And all other things will be added. Don't stay in the relationship and send your soul to hell. It does not worth it. Doesn't worth it. Come on a relationship, wrong. Shocking up, wrong. Sex during dating, wrong. That will send your soul to hell. Are you with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So if you're dating somebody, there should be no sexual. Sex should not come up in dating. It's a problem when it does. Is the church with me? So you're dating somebody, uh, breaking down your door for sex. It's the wrong person you're dating. Hey, hey, hey. Sex during engagement. Oh, we stop there. No, we advance into engagement. Sex during engagement is wrong. Is the church with me? You're quiet down here. Let me talk to the people. Sex during engagement is wrong. It will send your soul to hell. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Sex, hey, sex before marriage, any kind of sex before marriage, any kind is wrong. Forbidden sex. Forbidden sex. Here is Paul's counsel. Here's Paul's counsel. Paul, Paul, Paul give this counsel. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8. He says, but I say to thee, to thee, to the unmarried, to the unmarried, I say to the unmarried. What do you say, Paul, and to the widows? He said, it is good for them if they remain as I am, but, big but, I should have underlined it, but, come on, everybody say but. But, 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 but if they cannot exercise self-control, let them what? Marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Get married. Amen. So if you're in a relationship and you love each other, get married. That's what Paul says. Get married. And I support it. Get married. Yeah. Get married. It's better to marry than to burn. You know... <laughs> Um, what are you laughing for? I don't understand. You. <laughs> years ago, years ago, I was researching for a sermon. I was going through studying and researching for a presentation. I think it was a marriage retreat I was doing. And I noticed something that blew my mind. I'm going to share it with you. You know what Paul just recommended? That if we cannot exercise self-control, if we can't keep it to ourselves, let us get married. Yes, for it's better to marry than to burn. So I, I, 
I was going through and I researching and studying, and I noticed something. I noticed that roosters and hen don't marry. Amen? They, they don't marry. Roosters just jump on top of hen. Anywhere, anyhow. Do their business and gone. Am I right or am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. God, God permitted them to mate without marrying. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I notice lions don't marry. They have a family. They call a pride. Father lion, mother lion, and children. And they don't marry. Am I right? Yes, 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 yes. I, 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 monkeys are lovers, but they don't, they don't marry. Birds don't marry. Dogs don't marry. Insects are male and female. Fishes, male and female. Birds, male and female. Animals, male and female. God, hey! God permitted them and allowed them to go and mate and reproduce and have a family without requiring them to be married. But when it comes to man, aha, uh -huh, uh -huh. hey, watch it, watch it, watch it. When it comes to man, man is the only species of God's creation that he requires to be married before we start mating. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Before man and woman start having sexual relationship and producing offspring, God requires that they be married. Is the church with me? And I begin to wonder what's going on. Then it became clear to me that God make a distinction between man who he has created in his own image and in his own likeness. He wants man to function at a higher level than the animals. So when man and woman jump in bed in each other and having sex and producing children without getting married, God is upset because man has just go back down to the level of the animals. Is the church with me? We have just lower the standard to the level that the Lord leave for the roosters and the hen, the cows and the goats, the dogs and the sheep. Is the church with me? Yes, yes, yes. Man, let me say it again. Man is the only species of God's creation that he ensures he marries before they reproduce. So that's why God get offended when man take themselves and lower themselves down there because you don't belong down there. That's why God make it a sin. Is the church with me? Because no matter who you are, rich or poor, black or white, educated or illiterate, you are still a son and a daughter of God. He wants you to function at this level. You are made in his image. Are you with me? And in his likeness. But we have gotten so accustomed to it till people afraid are married now. Forbidden sex. Forbidden sex. Exodus 14. 20 verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. It's not just sex before marriage which is forbidden. It is if you're married, amen, all your sexual activity is supposed to be locked within the marital union. If you go outside of it, sin. If you have it before marriage, Sin. Is the church with me? 
There's a whole lot of sin surround sex. Hey, 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 hey. So God, help me. So God has what? Locked sex within the confine of marriage. The only time that sex is honorable before God is within marriage. So anybody, anywhere having sex outside of marriage, you are doing something that will send your soul to hell. By the way, by the way, by the way, some people think God, some people think God don't like to talk about sex. Some, some people think, yeah, some people think God have nothing to do with sex. Ha! Huh? Think again. God, you know, you know, let me ask, let me see if any bright person under the tent. When God made Adam and Eve, what was the first commandment that God gave to man? Keep the Sabbath holy? Huh? You sound like you're not sure. The very first commandment God gave, creator gave to the creature is what? Be fruitful and? How does human mean multiply? By sex. Am I right? So when God said be fruitful and multiply, what is God saying? Go and have sex. In other words, after God made Adam and Eve and put them together, if God didn't tell them what to do, they would stand up and look on each other for the rest of their life. God says, why are you standing up and looking? Go have sex. You're married. Amen. That's why after marriage, honeymoon comes. Hey, if you don't plan to go honeymoon, please don't get married. Hey, hey. Here's the text, here's the text. Then God, hear the text. Then God what? Bless them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it, this is it. God bless them. This is the marriage. Them. God bless them. This is the marriage. And then God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. The first commandment God gave to man. So let nobody think that God doesn't have anything to do with sex. God is too holy uh, to do with sex. Sex is very holy within marriage. It came, hey, by the way, don't ever think sex is dirty. No, no. It came from the brain cells of God. Nothing impure comes from God's brain. Is the church with me? Nothing unclean, nothing impure comes from God's brain. It came from the brain cells of, and if it comes from the brain cells of God, it must be holy and sanctified and rich. Is the church with me? God encourages, God encourages marital sexual activities. Here is Paul, here is Paul, to married couple. A while ago, Paul talked to the unmarried. Did you see that? Now he's talking to the married. No, how many of you married? Raise your hand. I'm married people. Yeah, good. Okay, good, good, good. Some married. Some hands go way up in the air, some halfway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's Paul to the married people. I'm in 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 and 2. Read with me. Paul says, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have their own Husband, good verse 3. Here, here's interesting what Paul says. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her. Amen? I thought you said a bigger amen. And likewise also let the wife render to the husband the affection due to him. Good, 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 good. I mean verse 5. Here's it now, here's it now, here's it. Paul says, married people in talking about. Do not do not what? Deprive. Deprive. I wonder what that means. Yeah, I'm just reading Bible, y'all. Paul says, don't deprive who? One another. Ex hey, hey, hey. Don't deprive me. Somebody said, don't starve. Don't starve them. <laughs> this is Bible. Don't starve them. Amen. Don't, don't, this is Bible. Don't deprive one another. Amen. Neither husband to wife or wife to husband. Yeah, don't, don't unilaterally decide. Ain't nothing coming this way tonight. Hey, watch your Bible. 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 
Watch the Bible. Except, except it is with consent, which means that both of you, come help me preach. Both of you agree there ain't nothing flowing. Is it, is it church with me? And if you decide to stop have sexual activity within the marriage, Paul only give one reason you can't do that. Here's it, here's it, here. That you may give yourself to what? Fasting and prayer. And then Paul said, and Paul is wise. Paul said, and after the fasting and prayer finish, come back together again. I was doing a retreat. I was doing a retreat. I don't know if my wife remember. Years ago, marriage retreat. Years ago. When we reach this text and we're explaining it. A little old man, his hand could hardly shake. And he says, Pastor, some of these wives fast and pray too long. <laughs> of course, you know the retreat mashup. Some of these wives fast and pray too long. The, the text says, don't, don't deprive one, which means that, hey, watch this, watch this, watch, which means that sex before marriage. Wrong. If no sex come after marriage, wrong. Are we together? Yes, that's what the Bible says. God encourages. And so by now, you realize that there are a lot of perversions of sex. I don't see anything that the devil has perverted so much, corrupted so much, polluted so much. Lots of perversion. Here's one. Adultery, perversion. Am I right? Yes, it's a perversion. Here's another one. Fornication, perversion, 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 perversion. That's where we get the word pervert from. Is the church with me? Here's another one. Here's a incest, perversion. See how much corruption? Here's another one. Here's another one. Rape, perversion. Here's another one. Here's another one. Homosexuality, perversion. Are we together? Yeah, here's another one. Lesbianism, perversion. There are so many perversions. Pornography, perversion. All of these are, are corrupt, immoral version of a blessing called sex within a marriage. And these are what jump packing hell. That's why I'm talking to us as a family tonight. So God says, immoral sex, God says gay sexual activities is wrong. Here's the text. If a man lies with a man, as if with a woman, both of them have committed abomination. And I gave you the definition. So God says it is wrong. Now, what does the church say? Now stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay. Stay with the preacher. The Roman Catholic Church is the single largest denomination of Christian on the planet. Is the church with me? Over 1.2 billion people identify as a Roman Catholic. Is the church with me? The head of the single largest Christian denomination on the planet. VOA News Report published this. Big the other day. This was a shocker to the entire world. When the head of the church suggests blessings for same-sex union is possible. And after that, NBC News carry this headline, quote, the Pope says priests can bless same-sex couples. 
Hello, somebody. If you don't get the impact of that, let me tell you what the impact is. God says this abomination. The leader of the largest church on the planet says, hey, whatever God say, I can override that. It, it sounds like, did God say you must eat of this tree? Yes. Well, I say. Hey, well, I say. Well, I say. I told you, church is a dangerous place. Dangerous place. How could you so... With such audacity, yeah, with such audacity, stand in front of God's face. And God says it's wrong. The head of the church says, no, it's a blessing. No, the problem we have, and so now we have churches that are conducting that. Man can't bless that which God curse. That's an affront to God. That's an attack on God. That's pushing your finger in God's face. And by the way, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because this is not the first time this happened. Oh, let me tell you. The church has overridden God quite a few times. See, and people, people not paying attention. Here's number one. God says it is not good for man to be alone. Yeah, here's the text. Here, come on. And the Lord, Genesis 2:18. And the Lord God says, "It's not good for man to be alone." The ch this same church says, "No, that's not true." All our nuns alone. All our priests alone. All our fathers alone. All our cardinals. If you want to function at a higher level, you have to be alone. Challenging God. And that's not the only one. That's not the only one. Here, here's another one. Here's another one. God, God, Jesus says, we must call no man father. Ah, uh, you never see that text? Well, here's it. Here's it. It's in Matthew 23, verse 9. Write it down. Here's what Jesus says. Read with read with me. And don't address anyone here on earth as father, for only God in heaven should be addressed like that. Hey, but this church, all the church fathers, all the church priests are fathers and the Pope is holy. It's not, they didn't call him father, they call them holy father. When the word of God says, don't. This is not the only time that the church try to override what God says. Here's another one. Hey, uh, hey, the word of God says only God can forgive sins. Hence, here's the text. Here's the text. Mark 2 verse 7. Why does this fellow talk like that? He, he's blaspheming they, when Jesus forgives somebody's sin. This Pharisee says he's blaspheming. Who can forgive sin but God alone? Forgiveness of sin is the prerogative of God alone. But this church overrides that and put priests in position to people to confess and then they forgive you of your sins. Hey! And by the way, this is not the only time. Here's another one. Bible says Christ is our high priest. Here's the text. Here's the text. Uh, Hebrews 4, 14. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven. Who is he? Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. And verse 16, let us therefore come how? Boldly to the throne of grace because we have a high priest in heaven. Well, this church says, away with Jesus and his high priest. We are substituting man priesthood. So it has its own priests who forgive sin. Completely opposing the word of God. 1.2 billion people. 
All because you don't read the Bible. And by the way, this is not the only one. Here's another one. God set up a day of worship. Here's the text. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This church says, away with that. We're setting up our own day of worship. So I'm not surprised when the same church decide to bless what God says is an abomination. Brethren, in the name of Jesus, read in the Bible. Read, 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 read. There's never a time when there's more Bible on the planet as it now. Women's version, men's version, children's version, this version, that version. Read, read the Bible. It's a, world, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Don't be deceived by churches. Read the word. Read the word. You don't have to listen to no pastor, no preacher, nobody. You can read for yourself. Read the word. So the question is, why is homosexuality rising now? Why now? Is there any connection between its rise and the coming of Christ? Is there any correlationship? between its rise and the end of the world. Yeah, let me talk to the theologian. Is there any eschatological value in the rise of homosexuality at this time? Is the church with me? Is there any, is there any end time significance? Why is it coming now? Well, here's why. Jesus said, let me read, I'm in Luke 17, 28. Here's the connection. Jesus says, likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot. No, Lot was in Sodom, am I right? They ate, they drank, they bought, they shopped at the mall, <laughs> they planted, they built. Meaning, 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 meaning. One word for this. It was at a time when the economy was good. You see that? Yeah, 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 when people have money in their pocket. Yeah, hey, 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 watch me, watch me, watch me. Saddam was destroyed at a time when the economy was good. Because, you know, you, know, you know, when the economy is good, that's when people forget about God. Yeah, 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 yeah. And oh, by the way, if you don't know, if you study homosexual trend, homosexuality tends to flourish in strong economy. Oh, you still don't get it. Poor people are not... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You see the poor people them? Yeah, no, 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 no. Homosexuality tend to flourish in rich countries. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when people are rich, they abandon God. Yeah, 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 yeah. So lots of Sodom, was, economy was good. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying and selling. Everybody was happy. The text says, the text says, the text says. I, I'm in the next verse. Verse says, but, come on, help me read, but. On the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained. I like the word rain. rain. It rained. Fire and brimstone from where? Heaven. And notice the fire come from heaven. It rained fire from heaven and destroyed them. Verse 30. Read with me. Even, read with me. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is in other words, put them, Jesus says, hey, the day when I come back, the activities that brought down the fire on Sodom and Gomorrah will rise back on planet Earth. You still don't get it. The day when I come back, the same Sodomy behavior, the same lifestyle, yeah, will flourish on the Earth again. This is fascinating. Hey, here, here's what I want to tell you. Something about sexual immorality that attracts the wrath of God. I've gone, I've, I went through the whole Bible and I noticed God seemed to have a zero tolerance 
for this particular sin. Somebody said, well, every sin is the same sin. Yeah, that may be true. But I studied this thing and I realized God seemed to have a zero tolerance for sexual immorality. Come with me, come with me. Come with me. Here's what Paul says. Here's what Paul says. Paul says, Paul says, I'm in Romans 1 verse 8. Here's what Paul says. Paul says, the wrath of God. The what? The wrath of God. Everybody know God to be a loving God. Yeah, but he has some wrath. Amen? Amen? The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and the wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. That's verse 8. By the time we reach verse 24, we get an idea of what Paul is talking about. Here's it. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to, to what? To sexual impurity for the de degrade or degrading of their bodies with what? God left them over. God give them over to sexual immorality so that they can degrade their bodies one with the other. God give them over. Lord of mercy. Do you hear the preacher? God give them over. Verse, verse, verse 26. Help me read. Because of this, God gave them over to what? Shameful lust. Here's it coming now. So that even their women exchange the natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. Well, let me decode this for you. Let me decode this for you. Natural, sexual, and unnatural man. It is natural for a woman to have sexual feeling for a man. That's natural. It is not natural for a woman to have sexual feeling for another woman. That is unnatural. Are we together? Yes. So Paul says, even, so Paul says, God gave them over to their shameful lust. Even their women exchange the natural sexual feeling for a man and exchange it for unnatural feelings. Is the church with me? Verse 27. In the same way, the men also, uh, look at the key word here. Men abandon. Men what? Abandon what? Natural relationship with women and are inflamed with lust for one another so that men committing shameful acts, says the Bible, with other men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their reward. Paul says this will attract the wrath of God. Is the church with me? And as a result, verse 28 says, Furthermore, just uh, they did not think worthwhile to retain God in their knowledge. They want to wipe out every existence of God so that God gave them over to depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. The word of God says, when you see this practice coming up on the earth, it will attract the wrath of God. I'll prove it for you. I'll prove it. At Sinai, most of you know that the children of Israel committed idolatry at the Mount of Sinai. Because Moses went up to get the commandment, left the church in the hands of his brother, Amen? Yes. And then by the time he came back, oh, oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, if you read the text, you know, Moses was up there talking to God. God give him in, giving him the commandment. And God says, Moses, hold on, Moses. We have to stop this meeting right now. You need to get back down. Why? All hell breaking loose down there. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Moses, you need to go back down right now. The church is in trouble at the foot of the hill. But Aaron is up. Go down. So Moses left. Run down. Halfway down the hill, he met Joshua. They run towards the, towards the foot of the hill. And Joshua says, hold on Moses, I hear singing and noise. But it is not the noise of war. 
It's, it's like a party going on. Hey, 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 hey. When Moses reached down there with the Ten Commandments fresh from God's hand, this guy's face was glowing with the glory of God. When he reached down there, the whole church was in trouble. Now you know what, you, what they told you. Hey, what they told you is that the people were worshipping this calf. Ah, that's not the full truth. If you, dig a, if you scratch the surface, you will see something else going on. Are you ready for this? Here's it. I'm in verse 6, Genesis, Exodus 32, verse 6. And they, uh, well, here, here, here's what, <laughs> look what the text says. The text says, when Moses went up, they rose up early in the morrow and offered burnt offering. Is the church with me? Yes. And brought peace offering. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to do what? To play. To play. No, I wonder what they're playing with. That's in your Bible. So I, I, I was fascinated with it because I remember one word. Playboy. So I went digging, Pastor West. And when I, reached, I read a little further, when I reached down to verse 25, it, it became clear. The Bible said, and, Moses went, and when Moses saw that the people were... Naked people playing. <laughs> hey, the whole church naked. Put simple. When Moses got back down there at the foot, it was a sexual orgy. They let loose. The, the, new, the new King James Version says they were unrestrained. They were, they were, you know, you know, the hippie wants to be free, sexually free. While God was upstairs giving, giving Moses a commandment that says, thou shalt not commit adultery. The whole church and the wrath of God was kindled. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, leave me alone, Moses, that my wrath may wax hot against them, that, they, that I may leave me alone so I can consume them. I want to destroy the whole of them, and I will give you a brand new generation you take to Canaan. God has a zero tolerance. That day, Moses called up the Levites and said, take out your sword, go through the camp. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses and there fell of the people that day. Three, about 3,000 men were, God says, take them out. The wrath of God came down in Noah's days. Ah, you read Noah's, right? And you heard that the people were wicked. Every imagination of them was evil continually. But look good, look good, look good. Here's what the text says. Look good, look. The wrath of God. Here's what the text says. Look, uh, Genesis 6, verse 1 to 3. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and that daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And you say, well, it should be all right because they took wives. But this, this taking of wives, something was immoral about it. Yeah, it was a sexual relationship. Once you say they took wives, 
It was a sexual relationship between these two that the wrath of God came down. Here's verse 3. Verse 3. God says, verse 3. And the Lord said, when the Lord saw that, the Lord says, Noah, come let me talk to you because my spirit, my spirit, help me read. My spirit shall not strive with men forever. I can't take what I'm seeing. Every time I look down, I see wickedness. Now uh, I'm going to put an end to it. 120 more years I'm giving them to survive on this planet. And the Bible says, when God saw the sexual immorality among his people, he was sorry that he made man on the earth. And the Bible says, and it what? And it grieved God's spirit. God has a zero tolerance for it. He was sorry. And the, so the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the... I will destroy the same people I created. For I am sorry that I made man. I made man to function up here in my image. And they function like animals down here. I am sorry... So after God destroy every living human being on the planet. Is the church with me? Yes. God wipe out every living human being. Including young babies. Everybody. And when it was finished. Listen to the preacher. When it was finished. The R came to arrest. Noah came out. God says, Noah, listen to the preacher. God says, Noah, I'm going to make a promise. And God said, this is Genesis 9, 12. Read with me. This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you. What's the sign? Help me read. I will set my rainbow in the cloud. And it shall be for thee a sign. Every time you see a rainbow, it's a, it must remind you that God's wrath will come down upon sexual immorality. It must remind you that God destroyed the world already. So don't do it because it will do it again. But this time not by water, but by fire. Watch the preacher. The rainbow is to remind you not to involve in that kind of behavior because God destroyed the world already and he'll do it again. Hang on. Hang on. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. You two on the camera. All eyes on me. Are you on me now? Yes. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. God says, yes. Noah, I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. Yes. It will remind everybody. Yes. Sexual immorality will bring the wrath of God on you. Yes. It happened before. Yes. It will happen again. So when you see it, it must remind you, stay away from sexual immorality. Is the church with me? Yes. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. Do you know what symbol the homosexual group take us to represent them? What is it? Rainbow! Of all the symbols that they could use, it is that which God gave as a reminder not to do it. That's what they chose and march under the rainbow. You tell me somebody not pushing their finger in God's face. And God will act. I don't know how God don't act already.
of all the symbol that they could choose to represent them is the very same thing that God says. When you see it, it must remind you that my judgment will fall upon you. Then you realize they didn't choose the rainbow by accident. There's somebody challenging God. There's somebody defying God. Is the church with me? And the whole world follow after it. When I tell you God is coming, I'm not joking. Every, every Bible page I turn, I see the same thing coming over and over and over and over again. God's wrath not just came down at Mount Sinai. Did not just came down with at Noah's flood. It came down at Sodom and Gomorrah. The wrath of God came down on Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible says the whole Sod Sodom and Gomorrah was a twin city like Trinidad and Tobago. And all, watch this. I'm sending you home shortly now. Hang on. Are you ready to go home? Okay. As soon as soon as soon say, are you ready to go home? No, we have an all night party right here. As soon as soon send you home. Sodom and Gomorrah was like Trinidad and Tobago. The national pastime down in Sodom was homosexual activity. It was legalized. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was legalized. And God could not take it. So the Bible says the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord, from the Lord out of heaven. Is the church with me? Yes, yes. The Lord burned up the entire city. Women and children included. Is the church with me? I want you to stay with me. So when I read it first, I asked myself, hang on God, because this don't sound too right. I'm sure there are other cities around that were committing sin. Am I right? Yeah. Egypt, if you ever go to Egypt, all kind of magicians down there. So why God didn't burn up Egypt? Why God didn't burn up the other heathen nations? Come on, people, stay with me. Every other nation was heathen, was ungodly, was wicked. Is the church with me? Why burn this one? Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. This is a kind of sin that attracts the wrath of God. So why did God destroy Sodom? I mean Jude. Hey, hey. I mean what? Jude is one chapter right beside Revelation. When you read it, here's what jump out. In similar way, I mean Jude verse 7. Help me read. Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality. And what else? Perversions, watch this now. And then the text says, they serve, help me read, they serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal. In other words, Jew says, the reason God burned Sodom and Gomorrah is serve as an example to anybody coming on the planet doing the same thing. And Jude is not the only person who said it. Peter said it too. Here's Peter. Here's Peter. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And if God did not spare the ancient world, but save Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. And, and, and if God... Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Watch this. Condemn them to 
destruction, making them what? Making them example, read with me, to those who afterward will come back on the planet to have the same kind of lifestyle, the wrath of God. Verse 7, Peter says, And God had to deliver, deliver righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the what? Filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, he was tormented. Every time he go to the street, man kissing with man, man having sex with man. Everywhere he turned, poor Lot was tormented. That's why God went down there and took him out. So why now? Why now? Why now is homosexuality exploding? Why now the whole world is embracing it? Hear the preacher. For over 750 years, that same action of homosexuality was a crime in England. On the English legal system, it was called the Bogri law. You would go to prison for it. Suddenly that now changed and become legalized. Why now? Why is it sweeping the world now? Why is everybody accepting it now? Why government legalizing it now? Why become national and international now? Why now? Why now? Jesus says, the day when I come back, the same thing happening in Sodom will be on the planet. That's why I brought you out here. So here's where I close. Here's where I close. Here's where I close. I was fascinated by this question. Why is it, why is it coming on now? When first time, pff, you never even hear about this stuff. Why is it legal? It was a criminal activity back then. Why is it now legalized now? Hang on. So I, watch me. So I went and did a little research. I'm closing right now. Closing now. I went and did a little research. I was fascinated with whether or not it had a connection with the second coming of Christ. And I went and did a little research. I wanted to find out how many countries on the planet has legalized homosexual activities, same sex. So I pull up my phone and I went to chat GPT and I asked AI. And, what, and AI spit out within a second all the countries on the planet that has opened its arm and accept and legalize that which God says is abomination. And then I was fascinated when I saw the list of countries. I was fascinated. My next fascination was, when did they do this? When did they start to accept it? Because I want to know if it is recent. Is the church with me? Because yeah. if it is recent, then I know. This is an unmistakable sign of the end. Yes, I want to know how recent, or maybe it's a long time they have this and we didn't know. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Hang on. So, I want to put it on the screen for you. The first country to legalize it was the Netherlands. 2001. Which means, which means, Netherlands has been in existence hundreds of years ago. Never legalize it. 
until 2000 and what? One. Come, come with me. Come with me. Belgium, 2003. Come with me. Canada, come with me. Canada, 2005. Spain, South Africa, 2006. Norway, 2009. Sweden, 2009. Portugal, 2010. Iceland, 2010. Argentina, 2010. Denmark. 2012, Uruguay, 2013, New Zealand, 2013, France, 2013, Brazil, 2013, England, 2014, Scotland, 2014, Luxembourg, 2015, Ireland, 2015, United States of America, 2015, Colombia, 2016, Finland, 2017, Germany, 2017, Austria, 2017, Malta, 2017, Austria, 2019, Taiwan, 2019, Ecuador, 2019, Costa Rica, 2020, and Northern Ireland. What have you noticed? What about the year? Every one of them, the world started to embrace it as of 2001. Why now? Why now? Over the last 24 years, this sign that Jesus says we must look out for has finally arrived. Is the church with me? And it took the whole world by storm. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You, if the Lord comes tonight, you must not be lost because you have information. Is the church with me? The purpose for the church is to give you this information. So I am going to, I told you this was a family meeting. I'll preach tomorrow. I am going to close tonight. I'm going to ask God to help me. There are a number of my brothers and sisters here under this tent who have not yet put their life in order. And tonight, you may just fall, die in your sleep. And if that happens, I want it to be recorded in heaven that you made a cry out to God. So I'm going to ask you, if you are in this congregation and you would like, by God's grace, to change your life. God bless you, my friend. To change your life. If by God's grace you want to say, Preacher, I want a change in my life. I cannot afford to go to hell. And I have some challenges in my religion. I want a change in my life. I want my life to fix up so it can be well with my soul. I'm going to invite you to come and join me here for this prayer. I don't know you. I'm going to invite you to come. 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 Is there anybody else? It says, Preacher, I want by God's grace to fix, God bless you, you. I want God to fix up my life. I want my social life to be right. I want my relationship to be right. I want my family life to be right. Come, 
Come, come. God bless you. I see you coming. Come. God bless you. Come, 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 come. God bless you. Come, come, come. God bless you. I am putting my life in your hand. Come. God bless you. 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 Is there others? Come, come. God, I cannot afford to make a mistake and go to hell. God bless you. I want to straighten my life up. I want to make it right. God bless you. I want you to be pleased with me. God bless you. Come. Come, 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 come. Come. God bless you. Come, 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 come. Is there any other? Come. God bless you. See somebody coming. Come. God bless you. You may want to bring your spouse with you. You may want to bring your friend with you. You may want to bring your husband with you, your wife with you. Come. Come. God bless you. Come, come, come. Come, God bless you. Come, come, come. God bless you. Come, God bless you. Come, come. Is there any other? God bless you. I see you coming. God bless you. I see you coming. I see you coming. God, I want to fix myself up, Jesus. God bless you. I want to make it right with 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 you, Jesus. I, want to make, I can't afford to live in sin any longer. I can't afford to be fretting every night God bless you come come God call you out here come 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 is here another come God bless you come God bless you see you coming God bless you I come in God bless you God bless you can't afford to run this risk come God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you they're coming God bless you, they're coming. God bless you, they're coming. God bless you. Come. Hear the word of God. Come. The hand of Jesus. God bless you, God bless you. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Is there any other? Is there any other? Is there any other? Is there any other? Spirit of God, move upon your heart. You want to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus? Come! He touched me. Yes, sir. Oh, he Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? God bless you. You're coming. And oh. Is there another? That touched my soul. God bless you. 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 God bless you, my sister. Come. God bless you, my brother. Come. He touched me. And Is there any other? Just before we sing the next stanza, hear me, brethren. If you are in a rocky situation at home, if you're in a relationship that is testing your soul, you want God to intervene this is the moment for you to come forward to says God I want you to come by and visit God bless you as you God pass me not God is there another God bless you God bless you God bless you don't let your relationship send your soul to hell come forward tonight in Jesus name come forward tonight in Jesus name there are some chains that must be broken come 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 there's some things you've been praying over for a mighty long time come since God bless you God bless you God bless you come is there any other is there any other is there any other is there any other Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Sing, he touched me. Come by the name of Jesus. Is there another? God 
bless you. I see you coming. I see you coming. Oh, 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 oh. Something, something happened. happened. Now I know. And now I know He's a sweet and very I must close this meeting. But tomorrow morning, with your next big baptismal service. And in the name, we just want to give God thanks and praise for so many people who have already made their commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing tomorrow morning, they'll be giving their heart to the Lord in baptism. Can the church say amen? And I cannot close this meeting tonight without extending this call. If the Lord brought you here under this tent and you have heaven on your mind and you want to say, Preacher, I too would like to give my heart to the Lord. I want my name written down in glory. I want to be in the number. I'm going to invite you to come on up. Say excuse to your friend. Come on up and join us here. The Lord bring you here to save your soul. Come. If you know you're not yet giving your heart to the Lord in baptism, not yet been saved in God's kingdom and you want as a preacher, pray for me because I would love by God's grace to give my heart to the Lord in baptism. As we sing the next stanza, I'm going to invite you to come on out, leave your seat and walk up to the front like a champion and says, God, I'm surrendering to you. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Final call, final call. Final call. God bless you, I see you coming. God bless you, I see you coming. Praise the Lord, I see you coming. Come! Lord, I want to put my hand in your hand. Is there another? God bless you, I see you coming. God bless you, I see you coming. God bless you, I see you coming. Praise the Lord, they're coming. God bless you. Is there any other? Is there any other? Come on, church of God, sing that song. They shouted out, he touched me. Yes, is there another? Final call. God bless you, God bless you. Something! Is there another? Is there another? And now I know. Final call. He's touched me and made me whole. Can the church say amen? Every night I ask you to fill up your car. My friend doesn't have a card here. My friend doesn't have a card here. Can we get some card over here? Bible workers. Bible workers. Where are the Bible workers? Where are the Bible workers? Give her a card. Okay. You want to make sure you fill up your card. Name, telephone, number, and address. If you need pencil, just raise your hand. My friend here doesn't have a card. My friend here doesn't have a card. Write your name, telephone, number, and address. You have a card there? Good. Just, I want you to just stick on that card. There are four questions on the card. If you like to surrender your heart to the Lord in baptism, go ahead right now in the name of Jesus, God. I want, I'm not perfect, but I want to surrender my heart to you. Because any day now, the wrath of God will pour out on planet Earth. And when that happens, it must be well with your soul. Tomorrow morning is our next big baptismal service. We want you to be in the number. You need to be in the number. Says, God, I'm surrendering to you. Go ahead and take that card. Go ahead and take that card. Your name, telephone, number, and address. Go ahead and take that card. And once you have made your decision, I want you to hand that card to me as we take the last stanza of this song. I want you to collect that card to me. Once you finish, I can take my card. Once you finish, I'll collect my car. You finish? Can I get all my cards? Oh. I will never cease to praise Him. I'll shout in all eternity. Sing that song it
something happened. Praise the Lord. the church say amen did you understand the message tonight good do you realize any day now the lord can come virgin you can't run risk with your soul salvation tomorrow tomorrow is our next baptismal service we want you to be in the number we want you to be in the number any more any more more coming more coming. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. We're going to invite Pastor Wes to pray for the congregation at the altar tonight. Or well, may the commitment to God says, Lord, I want you to help me straighten my life out. I want to be right with you. That when you come, it can be well with my soul. And that tomorrow morning, they will be in the number for those who give in their heart to the Lord in baptisms. Your heads are bowed. Let us pray. Our oh, gracious, loving Heavenly Father, you recognize the time is running out. You're getting ready to come. So you've sent a message to move the hearts of your people that they will know that today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. So we present everyone standing at the altar. We pray, O oh God, that their decision will be for Jesus. They will not go back to the way that they were before. They will leave here with the assurance that Christ will be all to them. May you seal their decision through the power of your Holy Spirit. And we pray, God, that tomorrow when many shall be giving their lives to Jesus, all who are standing here will be a part of that lot. But for them, others who have not yet decided or halting between two opinions, you know the challenges. You know what is happening. I pray you will have mercy in them, O oh God. Because I know that after you sent a message and that message is rejected, the heart becomes hardened. It becomes more difficult to accept when one rejects the message of salvation. So we pray for mercy tonight. We pray for those who are listening online and have not yet made up their mind, O oh God, that you'll touch them tonight. Speak to their hearts in that still, small voice that they will know the urgency of the time and will know that just as Sodom was destroyed, they were partying, they were having fun, and then came the judgment unknowingly to them that heaven had made that pre prediction that even so in the end of time the same thing will happen while people are going about their daily activities God has made his determination to now make judgment possible may everyone who hear the message tonight accept this message may those who have not yet fully surrendered, even those who have accepted you, but not fully surrendered to the truth, living not in harmony with your will, make sure that today all will be well between them and their Savior, so that the Holy Spirit will be poured out and God will do a great work before we come to the end of this effort. We thank you again for hearing us. We thank you for what you will do for us tomorrow. And we pray, O oh God, that you will send us home safely now as we separate one from another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We want to see.
Rupert. We have a Rupert here. We have a Rupert here. Please see me. Rupert, if you're here, please see me. Erica Wedderburn, if you're here. Erica Wedderburn, please see me as well. Erica Wedderburn, if you're here. Rupert Hansen, that is Rupert Hansen. Rupert Hansen, if you're here, please Indeed. see me. Indeed, the question was asked. And the question was answered this evening. Is it okay to be gay? The answer is a resounding no. And we were able to see that in the word of God, that the answer is no. Not only were we able to see that in the word of God, we're also able to realize that the proliferation of sexual immorality is a sign of the end and God is sending us a sign as we go this evening just remember it's not okay to be gay and God has sent his man servant with a resounding message as you go this evening remember we started online late but the full message the full worship service will be uploaded uploaded at a later date for those who just caught when pastor shan o'connor started preaching that which happened before the full package is there so until tomorrow morning when you shall join us at 9 15 until tomorrow morning when the stand shall be once more packed keep safe keep sweet and remember that god loves you and you are counting down to the end. Over to Newland Praise Team as they now take us out for the final night this week. God bless you. Join us tomorrow at 9.15.